Good morning and welcome along to God Day here on Revelation TV with me, the Reverend Dave Hodgson. And uh, today I'm going to be asking the question, uh, what are you like at spending money or giving money to be precise? Because um, quite often, uh, that, well, we know the Bible says, doesn't it, that uh, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, but what does that really mean? So we're going to open it up a little bit today and ho hopefully as we start our day today here on Rev TV, you're going to... Uh, start in a positive way and say today actually I'm going to give today I'm going to give of my time I'm going to give of my finance I'm going to give what God has given me to others and so what does it actually mean to give cheerfully well firstly uh, I want to say that many years ago for me uh, I got into a little bit of debt as a young person uh, not not massive not thousands but hundreds and for me at the time it was quite a lot and so uh, I decided at that moment I wasn't going to have a credit card. I just started buying a few things, which uh, stuff I needed, but just was getting a little bit out of control. So I had an overdraft and I decided at that moment I wasn't going to have a credit card. I've never had a credit card and that's caused some issues sometimes, but uh, uh, I'm still reticent. I may go to the point where I get one at some point for practical reasons. But at the moment, I've decided not to. Uh, and when I met my wife, Naomi, she was very much watching the pennies. And uh, if we went to a supermarket, she'd look for the cheapest brand or the best option. And uh, I was not as bad as her. So I met somebody who was even actually more restrained than I was on spending. But over time, we realised that we need to be good stewards of our finances, but also cheerful givers as well. Uh, so what does an act done cheerfully mean? It's done with a happy heart. And so if you're giving reluctantly, if when the uh, offering basket comes around on a Sunday and you uh, have that £20 or the uh, 50 euro note in your hand and you're not sure whether to give it or not and you're reluctantly giving it and it's something that you feel like you're doing out of guilt, then you've missed the point. Because it's something to be done in a happy way. Uh, usually spending money isn't fun unless we're buying chocolate for me or books or, or spending it on going to football matches or so on but sometimes we spend money for a purpose we support worthy causes uh, i know a lot of you uh, give uh, generously to revelation television and we really appreciate that because this uh, is able to keep the ministry uh, reaching out to many people around the world and so we're so what so we're, we're welcome and we're cheerful uh, when we give uh, and when we receive we support worthy causes we tithe to our churches that feels good maybe you write a cheque or perhaps you give food or clothes or time or expertise. I know that uh, Britain and uh, many of you that are watching around the world are great people when it comes to giving to charity. Paul is telling believers at Corinth to give resources to the church, not with a bad temper, or, uh, but with a genuine smile. Money, food and other essentials. Now, I, I used to believe that God liked Honda, Honda cars, because it said that they were all in one accord. That's your free joke for the morning, by the way. Um, but uh, they were all together in one accord. They gave to each other as each had need. Money, food and other essentials were to be distributed by the church leadership where it was needed. Believers were told to do this to please God and serve each other. This act of generous obedience was supposed to feel good and bring joy. Uh, during the lockdown here in Spain, uh, many of us have uh, looked out for families who have been struggling, who have fallen through the cracks and fallen through the net of social uh, benefits and so on that we have here in Spain. And quite often, many of our church members at Encounter Church have come forward with bags of food and essentials and uh, given help to people. We uh, heard a story of a young lady uh, who uh, was living in a tent with a four-year-old uh, and just with nowhere to live. And we were able to help her and get her into an apartment with the help of some of her friends and with people from the church bringing food. Uh, and so it's at those times that, yes, you are you moved by what you're seeing, but you receive joy from being able to give into that situation. When you're able to give, um, simply uh, here in a, a place called Frangarola, not far from where we uh, broadcast, um, the, there's a lot of homeless people on the streets and quite often just go there and buy them some breakfast and they feel so blessed by that. I know it's not going to get them a new home and it's not going to uh, deal with their, their life in a major way, but just a simple act of kindness will make a lot, a lot of things far better. And it brings joy to you as well when you can see that they are happy with receiving from you. This act of generous obedience was supposed to feel good and bring joy to the church and to God's people. Now, 
The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians that the Lord had graciously revealed himself in a special way, setting Paul an anointed path. He possessed nothing except whatever he wore on his back and sandals on his feet. <clears throat> people fed him, gave him somewhere to sleep, and uh, people uh, looked after him. Or they didn't. He relied on the grace of God and the generosity of strangers. And as a missionary here in Spain, there's times when I know that I've had to rely on, and I am relying on, the generosity and the investment of others who have invested into the ministry. Paul knew what luxury looked like from his time as, lead, as a leading Pharisee. <clears throat> he also knew what it felt like to give up wealth and privilege. When he encouraged the church at Corinth to do something, he had already set the example, uh, both in deed and in heart. In other words, Paul just didn't just talk it, he lived it, he walked it. He, didn't, he, walked, he walked the talk, I think I've got that right way around. Uh, Paul gave up every earthly thing to follow Christ but he did so joyfully with his eye on a greater reward in heaven with Jesus. Romans 5 verse 13 tells us about that. Now, I remember a, a preacher one day, and I can't remember who it was, but they said this, and it kind of really struck with me, that God doesn't mind you having things as long as things don't have you. And quite often, uh, we, uh, we think God doesn't want to bless us. And he does want to bless you. And if you look around, and let me tell you, I've said this before, but if you have a house over, a roof over your head, a house around you, food on the table, food in the fridge, you're in the top 10% richest people on the face of the planet. And so God has blessed you. And that's great. Uh, but are we aiming for those things or are we happy with what God has given us? Uh, and Paul learned what it was like to be content in all circumstances. And I think as a cheerful giver, we have to hold on to things loosely. We have to say, you know what, this money that's come in, it's God's money anyway. So I'm going to give it to the church. I'm going to give it to people who need it. I'm going to get uh, wisely uh, because we're good stewards of our finances, but we give generously. In 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patience, endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm. I love this. Can I just say this to you today? Our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you will share in our comfort. Yes, there's going to be times of suffering. Yes, there's going to be times of hardship. But also the Bible declares that God is a God of comfort. He is a God of love. So he sets up the theme of sharing things, whether emotional or physical. The church is created uh, to share every burden and reward. So we grieve with those who are grieving and we rejoice with those who are rejoicing and there are times in the church that we have to just come alongside people and don't give a glib answer and don't say oh it's all going to be okay when maybe it's not going to be okay for a while but just sit with them and listen and say we're grieving with you and we're sharing in this grief you see a lot of times when we talk about generosity we just always go straight to money and i've talked about money and that is part of it but quite often it can be just deciding that you're going to grieve with somebody that can be the most generous thing you can do today to grieve and sit with somebody who's grieving and listen to them and just be with them not to give the the cliche answers that they know to be true anyway but just to sit and to grieve with them and one day hopefully rejoice with them paul's letter followed troubles we experienced in the province of asia we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Paul is saying, if you, listen, if there's a competition on the bad things that have happened in our lives, I'm going to win it. And he, would, and he would win it as well, because he despaired of life itself. <clears throat> but he says the purpose of this suffering, in Paul's words, was to learn and rely wholly on God, who raises the dead. God raised his son from the dead, verses 5 to 9, and he can be trusted with their money. And that's the bottom line. Some of you may have struggled to trust others with money. You may have struggled to trust giving your money even to the church or to a charity. And you may have genuine reasons for that. But the bottom line is to say, actually, you know what, Lord? I trust you. 
even if I don't trust everybody around me, I trust you and, I'm, and I trust you with my finances. I was speaking to a friend uh, recently and uh, I was saying to him, how's your business doing with all that's going on in the world in coronavirus and so on? Uh, and he said, uh, well, we're having good months and bad months. He said, but I noticed this. I, he said, I look back on the months that I gave more, I received more. And I thought, and that is completely alien to our society. Our society is about hoarding, and I'm not saying not to be wise, you've heard me say that, have some savings in the rainy days, but our, God's economy is different. God says, if you want to receive, give. And so quite often uh, we fall into the economy of the world. We want to just continue to hoard and hoard and hoard and hoard. And God is saying, no, I want you to be a cheerful giver. And God, whenever I've given to the Lord, he has never left me in debt. I've al he's always blessed me in times of giving. So maybe, so five biblical ideas for uh, cheerful giving this morning. Maybe you worship God, but forget his power and trustworthiness. Or perhaps the issue is plain greed and rebellion. <laughs> We've all been there, so there's no, there's no shame in that. Uh, you know what God wants from you and it feels like punishment. Yet because you're reading this you, uh, and hearing this this morning, you must want to make a change. You want to learn how to give without grumbling. And so, as I wrote this down a while ago, I was just reminded of times when um, I have done everything I can to be wise with my money, uh, to the point where it became obsession. Um, there's a TV program uh, on British television called uh, eat the same, pay less, or something like that anyway. But, uh, and uh, basically these guys come in and they look at the food that this, this person, this couple, this family bought, and they look at it and they say, we could get you the same food for less. And so they go supermarket shopping with them and they say, look, you've been buying Heinz baked beans, but let me tell you if you buy these baked beans, and they let them taste it, and they'll, uh, and they'll show them later on, and they'll say, it tastes the same, but it costs less. And so quite often, and they get all excited about this because they can save maybe 20 euros or 20 pounds on the shopping or whatever. Uh, and, but I became obsessed with this, looking for the bargains, looking for the right things. And, and it's with the right heart, but it becomes so obsessive that we can almost become like that with our giving when it comes to giving to God. So number, so number one here, pray about giving. What does the Lord say to your heart personally about generosity versus tight-fistedness? Consider keeping a journal in which you pray for wisdom and joy. Record the ways in which God answers these prayers. If your heart does not soften, ask yourself why and discuss the problem with God or a trustworthy friend. Secondly, remember what Jesus said. He says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake. Now, this is not contradictory to what Paul was saying earlier when he says that, you know, uh, we're suffering. Because even in the suffering, God can bless so let me read this again. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and it will be put into your lap. <laughs> Any of you need something in your lap today, need some, something from the Lord, you'll need uh, something from him. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. I'm not talking about name it and claim it. I'm not talking about give this amount of money to get that back. I'm just simply saying this, if you are cheerful in your giving and if you are generous in your giving and if you're cheerful and generous, then God will not see you go without. He will bless you today and he will bless you this week. Pastor Joe McKeever writes, if you receive nothing, you are exempt from giving. As it happens, we have been given everything. Christ gave us eternal life. He gave us everything we need to live godly lives by his spirit. And we hear that in Peter, don't we? That we have everything we need to live life. And so God has blessed you in so many ways. Now, some of you may be watching from a mansion today. And praise God if, you, if God has blessed you that way. Some of you may not be. You may be sitting in a bed sit or you may be uh, even uh, worse, than, uh, worse than that. And you know what? Uh, it doesn't, there, is, there are no levels. In our society, we said, like, if you've got a mansion, you're better. If you're in the best sitting there, no, God looks at the heart. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, I have found it quite often to be true, and uh, please don't write in on this one, but those who've got the most money don't tend to give so much. I've found that quite often. Um, now, I'm saying not all the time. There are exceptions to that, and great exceptions as well. But quite often, I've seen people who have not got much who are given, and I've seen God bless them. I've seen, 
uh, they're not to be exploited, of course, but I've seen when, when somebody is faithful to God and when they've given money to him or when they've given, let's leave, leave money away, when they've given time to him, when they've served him, when they haven't got much time uh, or when they've, when they've just spent some time with somebody and they could have done something else, they could have gone golfing or something they enjoyed, but they said, you know, I'm going to spend the morning with you instead. And that to me is, a, is cheerfully and it's generous and it's a cheerful giver. So number four, imagine you are giving to Christ himself. When we give, the Lord takes it personally. We are handing it to him. Tithes given to responsible Bible-believing church uh, are used for kingdom purposes. And I know that when money is given to our church, Encounter Church, that I have a, a responsibility before God to make sure that, that money is used correctly. Fifthly, realize that giving can be fun. Pastor McKeever says that giving money can be fun once you get the hang of it. You surprise yourself in the realisation that giving money is far more fun than getting it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where <clears throat> I get very impatient, and that's another Bible study, but I get very impatient in the supermarket. And if there's somebody in front of me, especially with the social distancing now, somebody's in front and um, they're taking ages to count, and you know it's like £15 and they're going one, two, three four and I'm like oh when's this going to be over and you, you just feel like getting 15 pounds out of your pocket and saying yeah I'll pay for you now that that to me is not generous giving <clears throat> it's me trying to move the situation along and getting annoyed so it's called annoy annoyingly giving something like that anyway well what about times when somebody's there and they're a little bit short and you're able to bless them and give them a bit of money. Or maybe they can't afford the Mars bar, well, not that they should be eating the Mars bar, but, um, um, or maybe they can't afford to buy a certain thing that they've got in their trolley and they've just run out. Would you then help? And it's at moments like that that re we really see the heart. We really see the heart. Number five, realize that uh, giving can be fun. We've seen it so often. People who have, we've just been so generous. I've got to say this. There are so many great, generous Christians around. I know sometimes we get stick. I know sometimes that uh, people uh, have a go at the church about money and so on and talking about money. But I just want to say there's so many great Christians around. I want to say there's so many people who give of their time and, and daily give of their time. I, I know here uh, where we are, people that work in charity shops, people who spend time working in charity on a day-to-day -day basis, those that go and feed people. There's been some amazing Christians and non-Christians in Spain here under lockdown have just gone out and taken food to people, and it blesses me. And they feel enriched for doing it. So, yes, giving can be fun as well. At first, you'll be practicing and it won't feel good. <clears throat> As I said earlier, I've kind of learned so much to look after my money that I don't want to give too much of it away. And, I, and God has been uh, leaning on me and, and encouraging me to say, to just to give to money, time, whatever it may be that I have as a resource. Now, I spent a lot of time talking about money, but I think time is so important. I think we are time poor in our society right now. And funny enough, even with lockdown and people at home, we become even more time poor. We find our own things that occupy our minds. And quite often we just don't have time. And people come to me and say, look, Pastor, can I have a coffee with you this week? And I look at my diary and I realise how full it is with stuff. Good stuff. But I need to find time to spend with people. At time, I think uh, money is so important, obviously, to ministry and to... Uh, to running a television station, running a church is so, so important. But spending time with people, of course, I think is so vital. Spending hours and just spending quality time with people, having conversations, having a meal with them. Uh, maybe that's what you can do today. You might not be physically rich, or you may be. But take some time out today. You may be somebody that comes across your path today as we pray in a moment that God brings people across your path and you can give to them generously today. We're living in a world that wants to take all the time and we have got some great people we've seen under lockdown, we've seen uh, some great people doing some great things and the NHS staff have been absolutely amazing in Spain and in the UK. And, and I just take my hat off to them, they're heroes. But as <clears throat> we go about our day to day, who is it that God is gonna lead to us? Who can we generously give to today and when they ask the question why are you like this when others aren't we can say because God has generously given 
to me. I have no right to not generously give to others when God has been so blessing to me, when he has blessed me. So that's the wrong word, that's bad English. Forget that, edit it out. God has blessed us so richly, what right do I have to hoard God's blessing and keep it to myself? And it may be time, it may be your gifting. People who quite often say, uh, we have folks who say, oh, I can't be at church. And we miss people when they're not at church because they bring their gifting with them to church. And it's withholding that gift from the church. And, the, and I'm blessed when there's more people around with the giftings that they have because God has given us our giftings, whether that be uh, giftings of communication, uh, gifted prayer, giftings of prayer and healing. So many things that God has given you, spiritual gifts for. We can look at a Bible study on spiritual gifts. I'm not here to do that right now. But what is it that God has given you that you can bless others with today? So God loves a cheerful giver. And I want to pray with you today. We don't always pray on these sections, but I'm going to pray right now. A prayer to give cheerfully. <clears throat> Let's pray together. It's not always easy to give, Lord. The more we have, the more we want. But it all belongs to you, O oh Lord. Help us to want to be generous not merely because you command us to do so but because it pleases you when we obey you father enlarge our hearts open our eyes to the needs of others and show us how to be humble to give without expectation of an earthly reward knowing that you will knowing that you will reward us in heaven lord let me never forget that you've already rewarded me with your presence and have given the greatest and most sacrificial gift, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, as that prayer resonates with you today, I want to remind you that God has given his son, Jesus Christ. And if you're watching today, and you've never, ever asked Jesus into your life, then maybe at the start of this day, you can pray a prayer and ask him to come into your life because God has given generously. He has said that I'll give my son in order that you may be forgiven. Jesus died on the cross, he gave generously, uh, and he gave generously to all of us. He t gave his own life on the cross, and he offered it up as a sacrifice. And so today, know this, that as we go through our day, that God has richly blessed you. Final point, remain grateful today. Giving to those less fortunate helps us to appreciate God's heart for the needy and a desire for his people to join in the work. According to Adam's Dictionary, we cheerfully share what we have to alleviate financial pressure or support a cause that lines up with biblical principles. This should feel good. God wants our hearts to expand, and this sign of fruitfulness is, ha is happy, cheerful generosity. God wants you to be cheerful and happy as you give today. Our perspective changes, and we realise that the earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, and all who live in it. Psalm 24, verse 1. Our money was never ours to begin with. As for need, uh, needliness, God never wants us to forget that we need him, even if we are relatively well off. You know, I find it more difficult to talk to people who are rich about the Lord. I remember my boss, who was a millionaire, and I took, it, uh, took him to the hairdressers in his Mercedes SL convertible, and... Uh, uh, as we were driving, uh, he, said to, he asked me about the Lord and, uh, and, and I was able to witness to him, but he didn't have a physical need until later when he became ill and I was able to pray with him. And so you may feel like you have everything around you and in place and you've got all the, the money in the bank account fine and that assurance is there for the rest of your life. Well, I want you to know today you need Jesus. You need a saviour in your life. And so please with whatever God has given you today, however big or however small, I hope and pray that you are able to give today cheerfully and happy. Have a great day and be a cheerful giver. I'll see you soon.